China in 1900 was an imperial country. By 1949, it had a communist republic. Between those two dates, you have various groups competing for power in the vacuum that's created. You have the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. You have the Nationalist Party, the Guomindang, the GMD. You have local warlords and also the Japanese. In this presentation, take notes on the key factors, individuals and events that shape China's development. At the start of this period, you have the Emperor Guangxu. However, the real power lay with the Empress Dowager Sixi, who had overthrown him in a palace coup of 1898, virtually imprisoning him. Sun Yat-sen was the nationalist leader who set up the Guomindang. However, when the empire collapsed, he agreed for Wan Shukai to become the premier. He failed then to take power back in the Second Revolution, which led him to reform the Guomindang and outline the three principles of the people. Then along with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, he created the United Front with them against the warlords. Wan Shukai was a general under the last emperor. When the empire collapsed, he was able to force the nationalists to make him president. He failed, however, to keep China united, and never a great believer in republicanism, he declared himself emperor, but then died that same year. Let's do a quick run-through of China's history since 1900 in order to get an overview. By 1898, imperial China was already weak. The Emperor Guangzhou tried to introduce reforms based on Western models in 1898. However, the Empress Dowager Sixi rebelled against him and put him under house arrest. She then threw a weight behind the Boxer Risings. However, this led to further humiliation for China and having to pay massive reparations to the Western powers. The Double Tenth Revolution in 1911 led eventually to the collapse of imperial China and the establishment of a Chinese Republic. Wan Shikai, the new president, found it increasingly difficult to maintain control over China, accepting large foreign loans and therefore putting him further into debt with Western powers did nothing to improve his popularity. However, the Second Revolution of 1913 failed to dislodge him, and he was forced to accept Japan's 21 demands, which included control of various areas of China. Declaring himself emperor in 1916 made the situation worse, and when he died in 1916, the warlords began to seize power in the provinces. From 1916, China descends into warlordism. Sun Yat-sen and the GMD, who have been in exile in Japan, return to China and establish a rival government in Guangzhou. Realising that the GMD will need an army to win power, Sun Yat-sen reforms the GMD on militaristic lines and establishes a military academy at Wampoa. The GMD then formed the United Fronts with the Chinese Communist Party to fight the warlords. When Sun Yat-sen died in 1925, Chiang Kai-shek became leader of the Guomindang. However, he was far less keen on working with the communists. Chiang Kai-shek always saw the Chinese communists as the main threat and was even willing to tolerate Japanese victories if it furthered the destruction of the Communist Party. Mao Zedong helped to found the Chinese Communist Party and was ruthless in enforcing his own position and policies on the communists. He masterminded the campaign which led to the eventual defeat of the Guomindang and the establishment of the People's Republic of China. Going back to our timeline of events, for a time the GMD and CCP worked well together as the United Front. However, from 1926, Chiang started to purge communist sympathisers from within the Nationalist Party, and then 1927, with the White Terror, also known as the Shanghai Massacre, he actually rounded on the communists and attacked them. The communists did try and fight back, without much effect, and were forced to retreat to Jiangxi. There, they were encircled by the Guomindang and forced to fight for their lives. It was during this time that Mao enforced his own policy and authority on the Communist Party. In 1931, Japan, who had always been a presence in China, invaded and occupied Manchuria in the north. From Manchuria, Japan then pushed into other regions in China, setting up pro-Japanese collaborationist governments in Shanghai, Hebei and Inner Mongolia. As the situation for the communists in Jiangxi became worse, they were forced to undertake the Long March, moving 6,250 miles to Yan'an province and setting up the Yan'an Soviet there. It was during this time that Mao and his supporters was able to push out the pro-Moscow element within the Chinese Communist Party. These were the ones who argued that any revolution would have to come from the urban workers, whereas Mao was arguing that the revolution would have to come from the peasants, as China was overwhelmingly a peasant country. 
It was almost by luck that in 1936 the communists were able to capture Chiang during the Xi'an mutiny. They forced him then to accept a second united front to fight with them against the Japanese. This is the start proper of the Sino-Japanese War. In 1937, the Japanese slaughtered and tortured thousands in the rape of Nanjing. They then established what they called the new government of China in that city. The CCP responded with a massive offensive led by Peng Dui, and that led to the Japanese to declare their three alls, in which they would give no mercy to any Chinese. In 1941, the Guomindang showed they still weren't that secure in the Second United Front when the Nationalist Republican Army attacked the Communist Red Army in a series of ambush and surprise raids. The turning point in the Sino-Japanese War came in 1941 when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, bringing USA into the war against Japan. During this time, Mao was able to make himself supreme leader of the Communist Party, forcing any of those who stood against him to engage in public self-criticism of their actions. The Sino-Japanese War continued, however, the CCP and the GMD were increasingly at loggerheads. The USA tried to bring them back together again, but without much success. In 1945, when USA dropped the atomic bombs in Japan, that then led to Japanese surrender and the end of the Sino-Japanese War. Despite American attempts to broker a deal between the GMD and the CCP, open civil war began between those two groups in 1946. What is most surprising about the civil war between the CCP and the GMD is that the communists won. Despite initial successes by the nationalists, they failed to press their points. And in a series of daring campaigns from 1948, the communists were able not just to defeat the nationalists, but also to force them to flee to Taiwan. In 1949 then, from the top of Tiananmen, the Gate of Heaven, Mao Zedong proclaimed the People's Republic of China.